You know the feeling. It's magical. It happens only a few times in your entire life. That moment when you're dating someone and you know deep in your heart that he's your soulmate and you two are going to be together forever. Think about every time you felt that feeling of meeting the one. Can you picture that man? Can you conjure that feeling? Now ask yourself, what happened to those relationships? Did any of the men who you thought were the one end up loving you unconditionally, take care of you emotionally, and prove to be compatible partners? No, they did not. In this Love You podcast, we're going to talk about the concept of finding the one and how you can make better choices the next time you actually meet a great guy. Stick around. I'm Evan Marquette, dating coach for smart, strong, successful women, and your personal trainer for love. Welcome to the Love You Podcast. Keep listening to understand when you should know he's the one. When we're done, I'll let you know how you could apply to Love You to create a passionate relationship in which you feel safe, heard, and understood. So it's a story that's often told here in the Love You Podcast. It's the story of how I met my wife, but very specifically, the story of how I knew she was the one. Because... There's a lot of narratives going around about this kind of thing. And so I want to frame this with a metaphor. We'll use getting wealthy as a metaphor, right? It's a thing. And there's lots of ways to get wealthy. You could start, um, you know, saving a dollar a day from when you're five years old. You could um, get a paper route. You could end up working your way up through your parents' company in the family business. You can uh, go to college and end up working for some sort of internet startup. You can hang out your own shingle and be an entrepreneur. There's lots of ways of getting rich and retiring, right? being financially successful. Right? I just mentioned a, a handful of them. There's another way to get rich. It's called playing the lottery. Buy a ticket, spend a buck, scratch it off, <laughs> and who knows, maybe you'll win $100 million. And that's a fast path to getting rich. And it feels really good because you don't have to do any work to get it. It's not something that you have to do over 40, 50 years. It's something that could be done in an instant. So lots of people play the lottery, but what percentage of them get rich playing the lottery? Well, statistically, very few. You don't need me to tell you how few people do it. So. You have a choice. You could be the person who plays the lottery so that they can retire when they're older, or you could be the person who chooses one of the paths that I laid out up front. It's obvious which one works better, right? but there are more lottery players than there are rich people. So I want to share with you that the lottery, when it comes to love, is your eyes meet. The second you see him, you know he's your soulmate and you live happily ever after. That's the lottery. And you think that's the only way to fall in love. And it's not. In fact, there's a million other ways of falling in love that don't follow the, oh my God, you just know path. And so I'm gonna use myself as an example of one of them, not the example, not the only example, but I think there's something illustrative about how this works because we wanna play the odds. We don't wanna take the lowest percentage chance, the lottery, we wanna take the highest percentage chance so we could actually find unconditional love. So. I went on, as I said, hundreds of dates in order to hone my dating skills and develop like a palette for what I like and what I'm attracted to and what I am and willing to put up with. And, and you, you, your, your tastes evolve over the years. They should evolve over the years. You may have someone that you're most attracted to. You might have a type. Like I like really brilliant women. I tend to like women with dark skin and curves. But I didn't marry a dark-skinned woman. I didn't marry a woman with an impressive, you know, academic background. So that just goes to show there's what you think that you're the most attracted to overall. Right? And then when you try it out for size, you realize it doesn't always work for you. This is a theme in Love You. This is a theme of this podcast. So I meet my wife and I talk to her at a party and we just talk for six hours. Right? And we just sort of never stop talking. But I never had the giddiness that I associated with being in love in the past. But I also had that knowledge as a single man who's long single and had a lot of experience and as a coach. 
right, that every single time I thought I met my soulmate, turns out my soulmate did feel the same way and either dumped me one month, three months, six months later, every single person that I thought was the one where I had that feeling. So that just let me know that that feeling is inaccurate. The feeling doesn't say anything. So that doesn't mean intellectually that there aren't some people who the second they meet someone declare they're their soulmate and end up together. But that's a little closer to the broken clock being right twice a day. It's not that it never happens. It it's that most of the time that you think you meet your soulmate, it doesn't work out. So we don't have too much faith in that feeling. What they do have faith in is this process. So I was coaching a, 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 a client in Love You recently. Before I tell that story, I want to tell you the story about how I proposed to my wife, because I think it's actually more telling. I agonized because I was so... I was young, I thought I, 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 I was coaching and I thought I, I still thought I needed this feeling, right? This giddiness, this bolt of lightning to tell me it was the right person. But the truth is, as we went through this process, I kept on looking for reasons to break up with my girlfriend because I didn't have that magical feeling. And every reason I came up with was nonsense. Everything I came up with was, was, was stupid. I wanted someone who was, um, a little more like me. That's narcissism. I wanted someone who was a little bit younger so I could have some time to have uh, two kids. It's a valid thing. and It's a useful idea, but I decided not to go through with it. And so I would ask my friends, I asked psychologists, what should I do? What should I do? What should I do? I was agonizing about this because I'm the guy who's supposed to give advice on this and I didn't know what to do. Right. And I got a whole bunch of mixed advice. And what I finally realized was that I was looking for flaws, but our relationship itself was great. Our relationship was a 10. It was that I didn't have the associated feeling that I thought I should have, but everything was so great, why would I screw it up? So I made an intellectual decision. I proposed to my wife because I never had a better relationship and I had a lot of relationship experience. And we got married and I told you about, you know, I had, had some jitters about the process. And then we immediately started trying to get pregnant. And then uh, about, I don't know, four, six months into our marriage, uh, we had our first miscarriage. We saw a heartbeat. We told our parents on Mother's Day and um, the heartbeat was there at six weeks and by 10 weeks it was gone. And I took her to the doctor for the DNC and I held her hand through the procedure and something clicked. Something clicked in me. And the thing that clicked in me wasn't that excited bolt of lightning soulmate thing. It was the, you made the right decision. The thing that you have together is so much bigger than you and your ego and your expectations. You guys are a team, you work well together, you created and lost this life, and you're in it, and you don't wanna get out. So I had the moment that most people wanna have six months after I got married. I know I'm meandering, but I want the, all these stories to sort of add up to something for you to take away. So I was coaching a client in Love You recently, and she's telling me her dilemma. She was dating a guy casually, All right, and this is weird. I never had this before. She was dating a guy casually, but because she was in her mid-30s, she was really careful about not wasting time on the wrong man who might not turn out to be her husband. So as a result, out of fear of making the wrong choice, she made it clear to the guy she was dating casually that he should keep his options open as well. She didn't want him to become her boyfriend and he should keep dating other people. And she kept this charade up for nearly a year. And sure enough, the guy never became her boyfriend. What she never figured out in this is that she couldn't tell what kind of boyfriend slash husband he would be if she kept him at arm's length. Until she got into a committed relationship with him, she never really tried the partnership on for size. And so she never really got to see if it would fit in real life. She wanted to know he was the one before she even committed to him as a girlfriend. Right? So her blind spot in this case is thinking, and this is a video inside Love You that I'll share with you, thinking that choosing a boyfriend and choosing a husband are the same thing, and they're not. You choose a boyfriend in about a month. Guy makes it a colossal effort, 
ramps up, texts, calls. This is how men become boyfriends and it happens around a month. And then you make that choice, you take your profile down, you focus on the relationship and look towards the future. Once you have a boyfriend, as I said, you spend a couple of years figuring out if he's worthy of being your husband. You couldn't know these things from his profile, from a first date, right? From the first month together, because everybody's had a good one month relationship that went sour. So no matter how much you think you could figure it out, you can't, it's impossible. There is no substitute for the passage of time, job loss, health crises, traveling together, family holidays, issues around money and sex, losing the chemistry that you had at the beginning, the challenge of infinite forms of co conflict resolution as you work your way through a relationship and see how easily you can resolve things, how peaceably. That's the better indication of what the rest of your life is gonna look like, not the first few months when you're on a whirlwind romance. And if you are listening to me, because it's challenging, because you want to know right away. You don't want to spend two years. You don't want, that's fine. I'm telling you that you can't just know if someone's right. Look at your own relationship history. Look at every relationship that started strong and ended up in flames. All those men where you had instant chemistry and connection that didn't work out. That history should tell you everything you need to know about whether I'm telling you the truth right now. So there's always going to be some couple who say they just knew the second they met. Okay, they're the lucky ones. They're the exceptions to the rule, the clock that's right, the twice a day, the lottery winner. More often, they're people who are drawn together by chemistry, right? manage to wrangle through with the compatibility piece. It doesn't mean they're the happiest couples, but they stayed together because of their instant chemistry. Right? And they have a good story to tell about how they both knew. So sure, you can tell from a profile if you're attracted. You can tell if you have a great connection over the phone after an amazing first date, incredible sex, awesome conversations late at night. You could tell a lot, but this isn't what love is. It's closer to lust, it's attraction. Compatibility and attachment happen later. It's what happens after the initial rush fades. If I were to give you some takeaway advice, let it be this. You can't tell if a man is right for you, but you can tell if a man is wrong for you. Every woman I thought was right for me ended up dumping me. I dumped every woman that I thought was wrong for me and I did it relatively fast. So my experience with my wife taught me that I didn't have to know, right? like I know I have two arms, I didn't have to know to that degree. But since there were no signs that things were wrong, that's how I knew it was right. There were no problems. I was looking for problems, but there weren't any actual problems. Right? It's the absence of problems, the absence of anxiety, the ease of our interactions that led me to propose to her, rather than this powerful hormone-driven thing that we often substitute and call love. So when you're dating online, don't swipe on men looking for the one. Don't go on dates looking for the one. Go out with guys, have fun, see who keeps showing up, making an effort where you feel comfortable letting down your guard and trusting and being yourself with no fear that he's ever gonna leave. When that fear is gone and a guy's making you feel safe, now you might have something that's worth keeping. And that man may not be the thing that you always imagined, but he will be the only one, the first one to ever take care of you and make you happy for the rest of your life. Got it? Good. My name's Evan Mark Katz. Thanks for tuning into the Love You podcast. For more episodes like this on YouTube, click the subscribe button, ring the bell, and choose all to ensure you get notified when new content comes out. If you're listening to the audio podcast, please share an honest review on Apple. Really, do it. More reviews equals more awareness of the Love You podcast and more love in the world. And if you want to have an easy relationship that makes you feel safe, heard, and understood, look for the link below or go to www.evanmarkkatz.com to watch my free video about how to gain confidence, attract quality men, and fix your broken man picker. When you're done, you can apply to Love You to join hundreds of other smart, strong, successful women from around the world in a coaching community where women like you actually get the unconditional love that you deserve. I'll see you there. Thanks.